welcome back to Inspiration Education. Woohoo! Inspiration Education, episode number 31. 31. Hey, look, a little kid showed up. <laughs> Hi! Notice we have some guests today, so I'm going to introduce our first guest and then I'll let her introduce our other guest. So, uh, our guest this morning is one of our fantastic kindergarten teachers from uh, Desert Christian. I'd like to introduce Aaron Thigpen. Woo! And little fun fact, I taught her and her husband, and I currently teach her oldest son. Yes, hashtag I am that old. We love you. What can we say? I appreciate it. <laughs> Right, and down in this corner here, we have Kat Drubin. She's one of our actual, she's a parent of one of her students in kindergarten. <laughs> so this episode, as you know, we're all practicing social distancing right now. And so we are doing an online uh, video conference right now for our episode this week. And we want to highlight what it's like to keep kindergartens engaged while doing <laughs> online classrooms. We're so excited to bring you this episode because you can do best practices online with kindergartners. First, what what is your paradigm? What is your way of thinking in our kindergarten class? Because I imagine to begin with, our kindergarten class um, at our school is a little bit different than the typical kindergarten. It is. So in our kindergarten, we've adopted the philosophy of Reggio Emilia, and the kids are really used to this. So that's a lot of inquiry base, a lot of stations, exploring choices that they get to choose how they're going to show their learning. And so that is something that's already been established in our kindergarten. Um, we ask lots of questions about what they wonder and then go and discover the answer to those. And so this community of already having choices and hands-on learning is something that our kindergartners are really used to and thrive in. Right on. And Kat, just real quick, how has that culture been for you guys as the, the school year has already progressed up to this point? We absolutely love it. My daughter actually went to preschool at Desert, so it was already being introduced when she was there for her first and second year of preschool. So by kindergarten, she was pretty well versed in and was comfortable with, with the philosophy that the school has. That's awesome. Awesome. So then how are you, how are you making the transition then in, in the midst of COVID-19? How are you continuing that philosophy of student engagement and student-centered learning online? So we definitely didn't want our kindergartners to just sit in front of a computer all day with us because that would not be what their normal routine already is. So um, the other kindergarten teacher and I, Mrs. Jones, um, got together packets that we sent home and we tried to make the packets have a lot of choice boards and so those included like nine different ways that they could show their learning so that they could choose different ways that were hands-on to show the learning. Um, so that's the first thing that we've done. Do you want to show everyone what those choice boards look like? Yeah. All right, let me. Oh, hold on. We're going to share a screen here. There we go. By the way, we're using uh, zoom.us. Okay, so can you see that? Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. So this is our a writing choice, choice board for the first week, and we kind of gave a target that it didn't matter which choice you had, that the students would write um, three sentences, draw a detailed picture, but they could choose it. And the level of involvement of the parent could vary depending on the choice too. So we wanted to take that into consideration because all of our families have a different dynamic going on and their learning could happen in the morning or the evening. They might have a day where they can spend a lot of time on it or a day that they have less. So some options might even be like an opinion. Do you like Legos or blocks better? Um, maybe even writing a math story, which is something they had done in class a lot. Or it could have a lot of a parent involvement, like bake or cook with your parent and tell me about it or give me the instructions. Mm -hmm. So, so something I see from this already is that you set up a flexible learning schedule uh, and, that, and that, that this was really important um, for both the student and the parent 
Uh, and it also allowed for voice and choice for the student, right? Yes. Do you want me to go back? Oh, well, sorry. before you do, um, Kat, I was wondering what, how are you, how has this been for you to be able to sometimes be able to help your child and then other times you can let go of that control a little bit? What's it been like for you on your end with this sort of uh, choice board idea? The first couple days were difficult. I have a very strong willed child. Um, so she, <laughs> she would continuously tell me this is not how Mrs. Dick Penn does it. Um, oh. <laughs> very difficult. So I, you know, and Erin has made herself available and just the resources that have been given to us as parents has been amazing. So it's, I had to develop a schedule to keep her almost on track to what she had at school, not so rigorous, but to where it seemed more like, okay, our dining room table became her classroom. Um, so it's, I let her choose. I let her color in the, the block, you know, that she wants to do for that day, for that day. And we, we make just, so we, we make it fun for her. We, you, you have to, you know, I don't want it to be, you know, hundred percent classroom setting because I'm not her teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do want it to be something that she enjoys and that the love that she has for learning at school, you know, can be translated to home for her. Awesome. I think that's super critical in this time. We want to, we want to continue the culture that we've made to, um, to cultivate lifelong learning and learners. We don't want to, we don't want online learning to dampen that at all. So, well, I love that you've done, both of you have been able to, seems to be able to reconcile doing that. Okay, great. So, um, what are other ways, you had mentioned earlier to Erin that there was another way that you're doing that. I thought it would be great for you to share with the audience. Um, yeah, so we are using Class Dojo in kindergarten to keep the engagement piece for our students to upload videos and the kids can also send me pictures that can upload so they can see each other and just keep that fellowship and community going within our classroom. Mm -hmm. Right, because I think we have all found that and felt that it, as I, certainly as even as high school teachers, it doesn't matter kindergarten through high school, the kids are craving community and interaction and I think classrooms that have been successful have been able to do that um, even in the digital world. Right. Can you show us what Classroom Dojo looks like? Or Class Dojo? I love Classroom Dojo. Can't wait. It's so much fun. Wait till you see it. All right. Uh, go to your home page. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's so Aww. precious. So this is the home page where you can see all the different students and they all get like a little monster character um, that is different. And so each I want to be the green guy. <laughs> <laughs> Which green guy? <laughs> Savannah. I want to be Savannah. <laughs> this is the home page. And as a teacher, I can go to portfolios, which... We're not requiring of our kindergartners because that involves them to have their own account. Um, if parents wanted to set it up, I did have one parent that wanted to do that and that had an older student that was doing it. But I know in third grade, the kids are using the portfolios as they have a lot more computer access. Right, and, and that gives them a little bit more autonomy as well, right, at, at, right. The, at the higher level, yeah. Right. For kindergarten, because they do work so much hands-on, we want I wanted it to be as easy for the parents as possible so that they could just use the class story and messages, and they could do it from their phone and iPad, their computer, and that way it was keeping it simple and not overwhelming the parents. Um, we then have the messages over here where parents can send me private messages and pictures, They've been telling me, you can share this on the class story. So that's where we have like a private communication. And then we have our class story, which is really great. I can upload videos. Um, like here's a video that I uploaded today on math with partner switching and how they can just use dominoes to switch the partners. And what's great is I said you could use dominoes you have at home, but I was up, able to upload a PDF where the kids could cut dominoes out. So if they don't have dominoes at home, I could still give them a resource to do this hands-on activity. That's awesome. And then if we scroll down, these are some different ways that parents or kids can see 
how they're learning. So this was some meaningful writing that kids had done on the choice board. So what God is teaching them. And then some of them have been mailing letters of encouragement. Oh, oh. So this is a kindergartner whose neighbor that was also another kindergartner moved to Oregon. And so she is mailing a letter of encouragement oh. from her kindergartner friend. The best. So just to be clear, obviously these are kindergartners. So the students themselves are not sending you the photo, but with, this is obviously parent permission because the parents themselves are sending you these photos for you to post so that all the students can go on here and see what their classmates are doing. Correct. So this is another post where parents um, sent me the pictures we had done. I had done a little online lesson of two-dimensional shapes and three-dimensional shapes. And so then they got to go on a three-dimensional wow. shape scavenger hunt in their house. Wow. And so they were showing me what they found in their house of different scavengers. <laughs> oh, look so, at the joy on their faces. Yeah, so it's just great to get to see their different learning. Another great um, option is a lot of resources out there are allowing us to use them. And so we can, re some authors are giving us permission to read their books. And so I can do read alouds. Um, as a teacher, you just need to go to the website of the publisher. And so like if Scholastics is the publisher, they've asked you to just quickly say Scholastic is giving me permission to read mm -hmm. this book. I have found 100% that every uh, digital structure that I was already using online is giving teachers free trials, yeah. um, unlimited access. I have found that world to be phenomenal and supportive. So Kat, what has your experience been on the other end with Class Dojo? I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's a great platform. Um, Annika is able to see pictures of her friends. I'm able to communicate mm -hmm. with Aaron. Um, there's great links that have been uploaded to um, publishers' websites that we can read. Um, it, it, it's a great platform as opposed to, you know, going to um, the school website or, or whatever, you know, other schools are doing. I think it's great because I have it downloaded on my phone. I have it on the iPad. We can log on from the computer. So wherever, you know, we are in the house, whether we're outside, you know, on the grass or indoors, we can wow. do pretty much anywhere. So I, I think it's a great resource. Um, one thing which is fun that I get to talk to this parent is kind of at the beginning, her student was struggling a little more with the phonics lesson and the packet. Mm. And so because she was able to message me that, then I could do a phonics lesson online to help. And so that was just a fun way that a parent could speak to me and I could just respond immediately. Great communication and great way to keep the parents and the teachers and the students all involved together. It's a good partnership. Yeah, and something I noticed about your choice board, Erin, is that you're, it's differentiated learning, right? You're being able to address uh, different kids' learning styles and so on. So I'd like to hear about that from both teacher and parent perspective and how that's going. Yeah, so that was intentional in our choice boards of allowing kids to be able to do things at the level of learning that they're at. And so even with sight words, which has been a really popular choice board, they um, some kids are spelling their sight words using Play-Doh and um, stamps. Some kids are writing them and reading them on hot, hopscotch or um, scavenger hunts around the house and so trying to meet the students where they're at still and they're learning at home and it's because learning is not a one shoe fits all kind of right 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 and how about you Kat how's that looking in your home is they're getting to choose their based on on how they like to learn no I absolutely love it it gives Annika a wide variety of things that she can choose you know it's not the same thing every single day so it right really right right that's is, great. You know, you had mentioned resources and books and that kind of thing for your students. There was actually something that I wanted to share that I had found that would might be helpful for kindergartners and maybe even to some of the lower elementary grade um, levels. So let me just share that with you. Um, it's it's what it's called Vooks. dot com, and so if you go here. Um, it's really, really cool. It looks like it's an electronic resource for, for our kids where they can actually, um, access online books and they're electronic. The books are, 
Um, so the, the, the story is being read to them and it seems to be pretty interactive. Uh, here's one of them down here. It's, it's about hermit crabs. And if you click on it, then it, it offers a free PDF download, which I've actually um, already downloaded so that you can see what it is. The free PDF consists first off at the beginning uh, is just sort of some introduction about the book. Um, it offers the vocabulary that the student will find and that sort of thing. And, and then it moves on to a quick summary of what the book is about. But then here's where it gets really cool. It's a good resource for both teacher and, and parent as we're moving into this realm right now of online learning. Um, it offers activity ideas that I know, Erin, you would do anyways in your classroom, but that maybe some of us parents are not super familiar with how this works well at home. Um, so there's, it offers the parent a connection from the book into how, how the student can further their understanding, take it another level with some talking points. So this is sort of, you know, your first level of understanding where you can ask about, you know, what is a house for hermit crab about, you know, but then it, it, it scaffolds and it continues to, to offer different mo modalities of learning and it, and it goes deeper into the depth of knowledge wheel. Now I'm talking more teacher lingo here, but, um, but, you know, you can see here that you have drawn color. So for the students that are kinesthetic learners and they love to, they love to get out the crayons and hold them and that kind of thing and working with those fine motor skills too, right, Erin? Yeah, definitely. Um, and draw so then connected to drawing a picture of your room or you know apparently there's some things in this book about smelling and using your sensories and that kind of thing so then let's find other things in our house that offer different smells um and then you get to like i was saying that depth of knowledge maybe if you go to like if you're using um um the the depth of knowledge wheel a level four would be creating something of your own and so here's an offer for kindergartners, perhaps, where they're actually at a level four and they're creating something on their own. So this is a really cool research resource that, you know, perhaps our fellow kindergarten teachers out there and up into some higher levels might want to make use of. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Kat, you might see some of this soon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, one of the things that we really wanted to do today was just to get out there that online learning can be um, engaging, beneficial, wonderful, creative, innovative, uh, all the way down to, to the little guys. Um, and I, I really appreciate how, um, how, you've, how you've done that, Erin, and that you yeah. really wanted to, to expose um, expose this really powerful way of, of, of communicating and allowing the kids to interact. I really appreciate you coming on that today. Uh, thank you. Yeah, if there is one, uh, this, this question um, uh, for Kat, if there's one thing that, I don't know, that you'd like to express as, an, as a now adding to your role, limitless roles as a mother and now as an online, te as a teacher, uh, is there any words of wisdom that you can give for the for the teachers out there to make your life easier? Okay. Uh, or, you know, anything that might be coming to your head. I think communication is key. Um, I think the just I already have a relationship with Erin, you know, prior to all this, so it definitely makes it, it easier, you know, me coming to her for help. But having patience in yourself and just communication with your teacher, because if you don't communicate, how are they going to be able to know what right. your or what your student is struggling with? Um, but I think that's that's key in all of this. Online learning is fantastic, but if if you can't, you know, get everyone to kind of rally up behind you and help you out, you know, in the areas that you're struggling or that your child's struggling in is excuse me, struggling in with um, that that can be difficult. So just communication, you know, and have patience with yourself. And I'm I'm not a teacher. You know? school to be a teacher, you know, and just show yourself a little grace and mercy. You know, sometimes that it's it's just new. Wise words. Absolutely. I mean, we have to remember that these students um, and our and the teachers, we didn't sign up for an online classroom, right? We're not in college. I didn't sign up for some master's degree where I'm taking my program online. So, you know, we're not prepared oftentimes for the technology that it requires and the time that it requires and that kind of thing. So I love what you have to say that we need to give ourselves some grace and to be patient with each other and just communicate and just do the best that we can right now. 
Yeah, we've talked often about being okay with the messy, that it, it's not, it's going to be very imperfect. So with all that being said, Erin, how about from your perspective, what has brought you the greatest joy so far this week? Um, communicating with my students and my family has been the greatest joy. Just keeping that community together, um, struggling together, and finding joy. Mm -hmm. So even in our successes, I find a lot of joy, but I find joy in the struggle. And just when the parents message me a video or a picture of the students learning, mm -hmm. just every time I get one, I just smile. It's so right. awesome to see their learning continue and for them to still have a love of learning because that's what I want them to continue throughout this time is I want them to love to learn. Yeah. You know, and haven't your, haven't your boys been helping you? Yes. <laughs> I've had them spotlighted on some videos and the kids have, some of the kids have said, hey, that's my buddy from field day. Yay. And so they get to see that yeah. they need their parents in this online atmosphere but I also need help too. So I need my kids to come in and help me because I'm only one person. So right on. it's been a blessing. Something that I think that's become a side effect of all this online learning is that, you know, what you're, you both have been talking about communication and, and that kind of thing. It seems like the side effect is we're getting to know each other on a more personal level. Uh, yeah. When you were scrolling through some of the feed, I had seen that there was like a dog on there and, and we've got kids in little rain boots running out with the, to the mailbox and they're, you know, I mean, it's just fun to be able to see each other from, and I think that actually helps with classroom management um, and, and rapport between teacher and student is building on those relationships and being able to know each other as more than a number if they're the student or more than just the teacher, if you're the teacher, but that you're an actual human being. And, and I think that really, I think it's really a beautiful thing. Hey, Kat, any last words, uh, last, last words of wisdom or shout out to anybody? Um, just want to say thank you to all educators for everything that you do, because it's true. Everything that was done up until this point, you know, Aaron, thank you for everything, because you have set up my daughter and other students for success. And just thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you guys do. Thank you. We love you guys, and we can't wait till we get to see each other in person again. No kidding. <laughs> love, I've loved le the learning that we've gained from doing this has been phenomenal, and I am excited to bring new vitality back into the regular classroom when we get the chance to do it. But to hug our kids and and um, and see them face to face, I think we're all really looking forward to that day. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll ditto what she said, and I'll also shout out to all the parents out there. Oh, my goodness, what a heavy load that you're carrying, and we will really, yeah. really try to do the best that we can to lighten the load as much as we possibly can. Definitely. Thank you, parents. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, is that it for our episode today? That's it. Um, that's wow, it. what that's a winner, our... episode 31. I love it. This has been great to see how we're doing, but seeing it at the at the lower levels, not just the high school level. Okay, so just uh, in, in summary, this episode has just been about what is it like to maintain engagement at the kindergarten level, and I think some of the things that you saw here can apply to some of your lower level elementary grades as well. Um, keeping them active and keeping them successful, bringing in parents when you can, but also offering them opportunities to let the parents catch a breath and cook dinner and the students can still be working and that kind of thing too. So a lot of, a lot of really cool best practices. All right. Take risks and innovate. All right. Be inspirational. Right on. Thanks, Erin. Thanks, Kat. Thank Bye. You.